Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator, and you really need to pay attention to this video, right? Mm -hmm. So let me give you, set the scene. Yesterday, I got up in the morning and I started working and I went to go edit an auto hockey file and the file was missing. And then I'm like, well, let me go look around. And I realized all of my files under the S drive, which is what I share with Isaiah and Irfan and Rizwan, where all of the auto hockey files were gone. The, you know, the .ahk text files, right? Not the exe, just the, the auto hockey script files were gone. But on my other Dropbox folder where I have like 47,000 other auto hockey files, and I'm not kidding about that, they were all still there. So I realized it was probably likely that, that one of the guys had something happen. So we started investigating, and it turns out Rizwan had added his la a new laptop. And again, is after Isaiah joined a bit later and we talked about it, we don't know for certain. We do know the antivirus Windows Defender flagged AutoHotkey V2 as a virus, right? Right. What we don't know 100% certain, because we've never, I've never seen an antivirus do this. It appears that that they're maybe using AI, and I think if Zayas, you mentioned a post from Lexicos, right, talking something sort of around this, that it's possible that Windows Defender said, "Hey, let's just not delete the EXE. Let's delete all the auto hotkey files with it," and and that was Which crazy, is really insane. And 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 yep. basically, here's the point. And uh, so for sure, seems to me that some antiviruses are using, uh, beforehand, it was what is called heuristic approach to if they didn't have a file marked in their database as a virus, they would use the heuristic approach to verify certain aspects of the file and decide whether it would be a virus or not. Now, with the event of AI now, what happens is that some antiviruses, and this is confirmed, are gonna be using AI to determine whether the file is a virus or not. So. Um, AutoHotKey has this problem with the false positives. They have been around for a long time. Um, we There is a post in the forums regarding that specific topic. And most of the times, the only thing you can do is go to your antivirus, set it to allow the AutoHotKey installer, and when you see the file, what is recommended is that you check the hashes and stuff like that, the hashes that are there with the website and so on. Those are different topic, but the point is, there was a manual step involved in checking that you have the correct thing, right? Now, when when your AHK files get deleted that you created, you don't have a way to confirm that. So it seems to me that either the antivirus detected the new setup as a virus and it checked the file associations of it, like it is working with AHK files, and then it looked at all the AHK files and used AI to determine whether those are viruses or not. Now, just keep in mind, AutoHotKey files are just text files. They're not really right. executables right. per se. They, they need AutoHotKey to run, but as the computer has AutoHotKey, it seems like the AI determined that there was something that could possibly happen and so on. And the reason why I'm reaching or I ran into that conclusion is the post that I actually, I sent you the link, I'm not sure if you have it, about po um, Lexicos talking about that it was a very interesting situation in which only three or four files out of the setup that he has uh, created were flagged as viruses and he doesn't understand exactly why. And he was the one that mentioned about AI. And once he mentioned it, I went ahead and looked up a little bit more about that and I was like, Wow, that's insane. And he just started with that. There's no logic to signature or machine learning AI-based detection. When he mentioned that, I was like, machine learning-based detection? What? What is that? So then I started looking for it, and I noticed that there were a... There, there's a lot of uh, antiviruses that are using now kind of like AI detection. And he says that the detection name indicated that it was based on machine learning, and, I, and he reported the files positive to Microsoft and so on. But the problem is, for us, it meant all the files were deleted, right? Yeah. And, and and that's the... If it was not because we have been backing up that on uh, Dropbox, I guess, right? It would have been catastrophic because you cannot... Re they were not on the uh, recycle bin, right? right? They were not even the recycle bin. They're gone. <laughs> and then... And then Again, they 
it seems to be a very chaotic thing. And in here, he mentioned a few things. The um, He said that none of the files were flagged as last he checked, but then he mentioned some of the files that he thought that were flagged and so on. We don't know exactly how this is related to all the AHK files being deleted, but there is a possibility that that happens. And that's where what you wanted to talk about comes into, uh, you know, into play yeah. because well, you don't want to lose all that. Right. Just right. Not right. Well, so we built a little tool, which I'm going to demonstrate in a second here, but I wanted to back up um, slightly and just say, on um, for whatever reason, on the most recent version of V2 from AutoHotKey, um, is it 20.13? Um, yes. It, it, I have been getting, I don't know if I told you this, several comments on our videos, people saying, hey, this thing was flagged as a virus. Hey, this, and, and like you said, this is pretty common actually, but I can tell you this because I've gotten a lot of people reporting it. it it's much more common than, than it has been in the past. Like suddenly this one version, or maybe they changed their way they're detecting, right? Has, has really increased that that flagging of it. I still, I trust Lexicos. That's what it boils down to, right? I trust Lexicos. I trust him saying, I'm not looking at the darn machine or the um, source code to, to go through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't think there's a virus. It's just that people use AutoHotKey for bad things. And I have a video on total, um, total virus total showing how, look, let's, let's have the AutoHotKey executable. It doesn't detect anything. Let's add like a message box to it and compile it. And suddenly it's a virus, right? Like right, yeah. it doesn't actually check your code. It just says, well, a lot, it's not signed. And a lot of people use auto hotkey for doing bad things. And I don't know what it does, but I'm just going to flag it as a virus. So this is, this is that, that point right there. The last point is something that we confirmed with one of our hero members. So he did all the steps to sign his own code and before signing, so it is just the executable compiled and before signing it, uh, it was being detected like uh, 15 antiviruses detected it out of 70, which is usually a good indication that it's a false positive. It's not most antiviruses. It's just a group of them that flags as a virus. But as soon as he signed the code, he didn't change, he didn't change anything. The code is doing exactly the same thing. Everything is exactly the same. He just signed it. And just because of that, the, the detection rate dropped dramatically in a way that we were like, well, they are kind of like forcing you to have your code signed, which is a step that is not only uh, cumbersome because there's a lot of things involved, but also it costs money and it is not like cheap, right? So we might, we might have to go ahead and just plan, even if, I know Tank said he was interested in doing it for the autohotkey.exe, but maybe we should go ahead and, and just We'll pay for it and we'll do it. Um, and then we can say it, you know, at least it, at least it's signed, right? Like, and that should yeah, help. Yeah, definitely. So but, in this case, and I think that's one of the things the AutoHot key setup tool is not signed, if I remember right. It is never, he has never actually signed it. So no. he just compiles and sends it over. And maybe that's the reason why you would have some false positives when you're trying to install it, right? Right. After that, you will not get those, but yeah all right so let's let's get stick with this video here so again first thing you could do is just go and, and here's the thing you could copy all of your auto hockey scripts they're not usually big right you could copy them and then you could put them on you know another drive however your antivirus is probably looping across all of your drives right so that's yes. not a good solid plan because it'll still and even if you zip it often antivirus peeks into zip files so that's not a good answer either what um, initially I was like, okay, well, let's possibly change the extensions. We'll create a backup, but we'll, we'll change the backup extension. So that way the antivirus doesn't know what's associated auto hotkey. So what we yeah. did was, um, we created a tool, this little GUI tool here, and it asked you a couple questions. So first you say, where do you want to back it up to my, on mine? I have a, a F drive. Like I said, I actually back up my Dropbox and then I, because this one I'm going to run somewhat regularly. This is just the auto hotkey files. Well, I shouldn't say that because I'm giving it two extensions, auto hotkey, HK, and INI files. Because sometimes I have preferences saved in my INI files. And I figured, you know what? All right, they're tiny also. I'll back them up as well. I select where they're going to go. And then here I can pick one or many, you know, I can pick one folder at a time. I'm going to pick FFmpeg because I have 
under that, there's several folders underneath that that have scripts. Um, and then I can choose to enable or disable this. Again, if you don't click add back to extension, which at some point maybe we'll change this where you can change that. If you don't like BAK, they can change it what yeah. they want, right? Add blank to extension and they can type it in. Um, yeah. But I wouldn't trust, like you might use this to create it and then zip the files and then email them to yourself. Um, and that way you have a, them actually off of your hard drive. But I'm going to click this just to do that and hit save and run. Now it's going under there. And this should be pretty fast because, yeah, it's already done. It created these. And in here, if we look in any one of them, notice the auto hotkey files end in .ahkbak, right? So yes. this allows you to create a backup of them, of, and it's recursion, recursive, so it'll look underneath everything there and underneath it with all the, whatever extensions you give it. You can see this one, let's see here. There are um, 170 files I had already in there. Like I said, I have, we have, we've done a lot of stuff with, with um, FFmpeg, but uh, it's pretty quick, right? So, and then in here, you can choose if I've already configured this, I can enable this. And now when I relaunch it, if I was to relaunch it, see that sticks. If I relaunch it, it'll go do that backup for me just when I launch it. So it doesn't even bring up the GUI. And if I select this, it will exit when finished. So now what I could do is I could go to task scheduler and schedule this to run every day, once a week or something. Personally, I'm gonna to point to my S drive, which is all of our auto hotkey stuff. Um, and well, not there, but here, and it will go through and create a backup. Now I'm not going to do it here because it takes several minutes because we have 77. No, actually with the any files, it was what? It was like 16,000. 16, yeah. 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 It's a lot. Um, so it takes a little bit of time for that. Right. But this at least will give you some protection. What I would still highly recommend is I'll probably still, you know, come in here, select this whole thing, send it to a zip file and then email that to myself because right. Who knows what antivirus stuff or you know is going to do? I think one of the simplest approaches was if you have a Dropbox folder, either just back up everything to a, a place in the back in the Dropbox folder. Which by the change of the extension, if that was part of the problem, like they might not get deleted right because they're not the same type. And second of all, if they do get deleted, at least on the Dropbox folder, you can go back and sure, which is what we did from there, right? Which is which used to restore the in, the, in the first place. But having it just move it into a backup folder every certain time that seems like a good idea to me. So, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and this is the question: like, can we schedule this up? Like, can we make it so that right. it? Right. Well, that's why I said was for our tool. I talked to Irfan. I'm like, well. Oh, should we should we allow people to schedule it once a week, once a day? And then I'm like, well, then we need the time of the day because people's computers may or not be on. And I'm like, you know what? Use task yeah. scheduler to go. I yeah, said, let's exactly. just task yeah. scheduler. Yeah, That's let them the, let, use a tool that already exists on everyone's computers to do the right. the crazy combination of the stuff. And then right. um, our tool just we have those options where it will automatically execute it if it just at, at runtime, right? So, but yeah. Um, Stay safe, people. Like I can't imagine how much it would suck if we lost all of our auto hockey files. Like it, it would it be such a monumental. This is why everything I do, everything, even my desktop here, is under Dropbox, and I can go and restore it. I can go and look at versions and stuff, and have some approach. We we use Git for working with other people when we're working in the group and and sharing scripts and stuff. It's great, but that doesn't cover a lot of other stuff like your word marketing stuff and whatever. Right. So have a place where everything's backed up regularly. Um, and especially cause that restore tool, it was pretty cool. Um, I, I went in, picked a folder and said, "Lo, I want to rewind this folder. And then it allowed me to say, pick the folder. Now look at the time, what day. Okay. This day yeah. it said, well, what time on that day and allowed us to see all of a sudden, and it said Rizwan's computer started deleting all these auto file yeah. auto files. And so we're like, right. okay, right, right there. And within it actually was really fast. It was within like a minute. Um, it restored on everyone's computers. Um right. there was a lot of traffic, right? But it was great because it saved us an amazing amount of work. Yeah, definitely. All right. So I'll I'll put the link to get that download. We might end up tweaking because we were in a rush to get that 
version done because I want to get it out there because this to me it's it's crazy important that like I don't yeah. want people losing their stuff. So um that it, we might it might be a little slightly different when you download it, but um that's the bulk of it. But well, we are the largest auto hockey channel, by the way. Don't forget, um subscribe and we release videos three times a week. This one will be four a week this time. Cheers. <laughs>